Guys, I I finally got a haircut. Now don't laugh, okay? Don't laugh. One thing I've noticed after getting a haircut, look at, look how flat my head is. Look at what headphones have done to the top of my head. My skull is indented. Also, everyone making the joke, haha, he's going bold. I've always had a high widow's peak, all right? That's not a cope. Now, I do want to say, I know a lot of you have been complaining that, you know, the, the, the background's boring. There's not really a lot there. You got a little skeleton down there that I've been featuring on some streams. <laughs> I, I've even got this potted plant that exclusively grows indoors, but you know what? It's, it's been a while since a normal commentary video, so I'm gonna treat you guys. I'm gonna bring back the old pyrocynical bedroom. Look at that. We have returned to form. We are back in business. I am so happy I'm finally in the pyrocynical bedroom again. <laughs> I saw these memes on Reddit of people doing like memorials of it and stuff like it has been a minute Look, I will get a proper background in I promise all right I just I don't want to stick up those like Nano leaf things that every youtuber has also I want to say as well only a small percentage of you are subscribed That's a lie, but please subscribe anyway. It's free and if you don't like it I will emotionally manipulate you to stay subscribed. Why don't you fuck off now everyone I have an important announcement He's back Lord and Savior, the prodigal son, no neckhead, he is back. So last, <coughs> so last year, I made a video on this gentleman called Ed, this amazing specimen, and he first appeared on the show TLC. TLC, or the <coughs> learning channel, is like the holy grail of commentary content. <laughs> You had uh, My Strange Addiction, where a woman would just eat sand. I covered that like five years ago, back when I was doing the, the funny deep fake voice. I just love the crunch. So you heard it right, kids. This woman here enjoys eating sand. I mean, it's a pretty weird like pastime, I gotta be honest with you. You, are looking. you had My Crazy Obsession, which was the exact same show. I, I think in that one they followed like a stalker around for a day. Are you from One Direction? No, fuck off. This was 2013, by the way. This is before like stands were a, were a mainstream thing. I think they had a spin-off as well called Freaky Eaters where they just have like a, a guy eating cheeseburgers. Victor lives on cheeseburgers and cheeseburgers alone. Sometimes... I dream about cheese. He's the reason Mr. Breast expanded his business to London. Long story short, if you have any kind of life problem, TLC will happily take that and exploit it for their own personal gain. I'm gonna be a one-man cheeseburger. They're basically like commentary channels, but with a much higher budget. Yeah, I see you. I see you uploading daily, Will and E. I see that TLC shit on my timeline every day. Now, my last video on Ed, which was a while ago, he was on a show called 90 Day Fiance. And on that show, he met a beautiful girl from the Philippines called Rose. Now, the relationship wasn't perfect. I mean, there was a couple red flags. Like, for example, how she would take money from his wallet. And Ed, the no-necked Avenger, like, he, he had a couple of problems of his own. For example, he was incredibly controlling. They both agreed it was a good idea to probably break off. Eventually, Rose broke up with Ed to talk smack about him from the safety of her own living room. I did uh, not freshen up. Uh, when uh, we meet, uh, he smell sore, and maybe it's because of mayo on, on uh, his hair. <laughs> I feel that that was made up just to get back at him for like offering the, the toothbrush. He does put mayo in his hair though, by the way. We, we've established that. It, it's got conditioning properties, all right? Dyeing my hair irritates my scalp. I found out that mayonnaise makes it smoother and less dry. There was a bit in the show where Ed and Rose sat down and Ed literally gave her a toothbrush, toothpaste and said, you stink, clean yourself up. I've had enough of your snide insinuations. But, in her defense, he does put mayo in his hair. Religiously. I actually gave myself the name Big Ed because it makes me feel tall. I'm actually 4'11", not in heels. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. He's not handsome and 4'11", uh, he's different from 5 to right. So, by Ed, tell me 5 Okay, firstly. Not handsome? Look at this guy. He is literally the Chad King Penguin. I did a video on Big Ed with Oompaville last week, and we were just both admiring the swagger that this man has. 
I also like how she complains about him being 4'11", not 5'2". Oh my god. Are you real? Oh my god, you're so real. Oh. I like how she's coping like a girl on Tinder saying that, you know, I'll only date men six foot and above. Four. Ed needs to take a test to find out where his neck went. Okay, first of all, my neck never went anywhere. It's always been there. It's been a little shorter. My inches are where it counts. That wink at the end, just like, it, it cements him as the hero of his own story. We are just NPCs on the same planet as Ed. It's very important for Ed. Give me two kids. That's my dream. Okay, wait a minute. We never talked about two kids. We had talked about you wanting a daughter. Uh, hey, hey, come on, Rose. Rose, you said one kid, not two. Don't, don't, don't be twisting his words now. Uh, recently, Ed went on a live talk show to talk about his current life choices and where he's at. And also, I want to say, I feel the producers of the show deliberately did him dirty here. Like, just look at the amount of sweat on his face. He looks absolutely terrified. Yeah. Okay. I went ahead with the operation. So, Rose, I got a vasectomy. I had it done. I had to ice my, 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 my balls for like a week. Okay. They make fun of him for this and like, just, just look at the last bit of joy that leaves his face in that frame. That is sad to watch, man. Uh, yeah. Can you still ride your Vespa? Oh, well, I did. Okay, that's not fair. I did. I rode it into the studio. Don't make me laugh. That hurts. Oh. Don't make me laugh. My soul leaves quicker. Now, what both of these people did after appearing on TLC respectively is cash out. You know, you go on a show like this, you have a monolithic amount of clout. Most people laughing at you, but still, you've got that attention. And the best thing you can do is turn people laughing at you into a revenue stream. I mean, you know, if Jake Paul can turn God Church into a shirt, then anything can be monetized. By the way, guys, look at this, look at this merch. Wow, look. <laughs> Firstly, Ed has a merch store where you can buy a, a sticker of him on, on a moped captioned, love yourself. Because when I think of self-care, I think of a middle-aged manlet on a moped. He also has his own YouTube channel with about 50,000 subscribers. He makes these videos that are like so bad, it, it's kind of bordering on that level of just irony. Like for example here, where he clickbaits himself falling off a bridge. That's too close. No, no, no. Come on, come on, don't. <laughs> He's also got a collection of mukbangs on his channel and they're, they're, like they're up there with Nikocado Avocado in terms of how vile they are. Meanwhile, his TikTok is actually booming. I mean, he's got over a million followers on there, but just look at the kind of content he posts on there. It is avant-garde. Uh, so, it's so like, if that doesn't scream middle-aged man, I, I have no idea what does. He's so adorable, man. Like his dad energy is just through the roof. You, you know he's got a phone and he's got one of those like leather cases on the phone that's bigger than the entire phone itself. Now, remember that I said Ed has 50,000 YouTube subscribers. Nothing phenomenal, but still fairly decent. Rose, his ex, also has a YouTube channel. 700,000 subscribers. That's like nearly a quarter of what I have. No, it's not. Wait, what's math again? Literally Malaysian Tommy in it. Like, Jesus, do, do not tell her about Minecraft, please. So for today, we're going to watch to my first YouTube video. <laughs> her main content consists of vlogs, like here, for example, where she gets a man to throw holy water around her new house. But the main reason, the main reason I'm here today with a 2017-esque commentary video. It's because Big Ed has chosen to go through the ringer again and reappear on 90 Day Fiancé with a spin-off called 90 Day The Single Life. People that basically got cooked and rejected in the original 90 days and then were given a second chance. Round one. Right now I'm on four dating apps, but I want to give myself my best odds. So I might be adding a couple more. Four dating apps. God damn, my, my boy Ed. My boy Ed getting around. Like, how, how do you even manage four dating apps? Like, you got Tinder, maybe Discord on the side. Don't worry, kitten. Daddy's here. Emergency meeting. You need a haircut. No. Yes. You need a haircut. You need a haircut. The lack of self-awareness on this man is just 
admirable. I genuinely feel like nothing could offend Ed because he he just can't process anything as an insult. He really doesn't look like a legend. He looks like a weird dude adjusting his glasses. Don't you know who Keanu Reeves is? Like, it's not Keanu Reeves. It's one of the crackheads in cyberpunk that looks like 2% like Keanu Reeves. Can we appreciate like the small stature of this man compared to the moped? They are actually the same size. Like they're perfect for each other. Batman has his Batmobile. Big Ed has his moped. Oh my god, it rhymed! So Ed is meeting Lily. They're only friends, but she's the manager of a restaurant, and Ed has been eyeing up one of the employees. I don't want to be in the friend zone, so I want to get it right. Nice to meet you. I only hang out with girls where, with, where their first name starts with the letter L. Technically, mine starts with E. <laughs> what? <laughs> but Wait, I'll what's take that? It. Imagine just walking up to a random woman. Like, I like women that begin with L. My name is Dees. Okay, so I think you're amazing. And uh, I want to ask you out on a date. Yes. 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 So we can get to know each other. So we can get to know each other. Doing it right. He's doing it right. He's doing it right. Now, I gotta like defend Ed here again. Like, I am I, I am on his payroll. The editing team are like, they're trying to do him so dirty here. Like, you can tell that they're lingering on downtime or like they'll shoot someone when the other person is speaking to make it look like no one said anything for like five minutes. <coughs> They even added like ambient traffic in the background. You know that Gordon Ramsay violin that they pulled from like Hell's Kitchen? Just play that over the top as well. And uh, I want to ask you out on a date. Brunch? Hi. Brunch, I love it. Brunch, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. He got himself a date, lads. We did, high five, All right. we did it, we did it. I am so happy that Liz and Edward are now dating. Ed, full of confidence, goes back home where he lives with his mom to tuck into some much deserved alphabet -y spaghetti. Now, Ed's mom, she's amazing and such a sweetheart. She does everything for him, uh, washes up after him, takes care of his clothes, any mess left behind. And most importantly, she is his professional hairstylist. Hair, it's great. I have a great hairdresser. Did you mayonnaise your hair? I mayonnaised it the day before yesterday. And after I dyed it. Feels soft. I think you left a little mayonnaise on your hair. I feel physically repulsed. Could you imagine like any date he goes on with a woman and he smells of mayo? Like he just he has to order like anything with mayonnaise on the menu to mask the smell. No, sweetheart, it's not me. No, no, no. It's, 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 the, it's the mayo sandwich I ordered. Over the years, I've had too many hairstyles that I know how to count. My most successful was probably my Caesar cut, where you would pull it all forward and then push it back. I went through one mustache phase. I had a little a Frank Poncherello. Look, he, he actually looks amazing there. Move over, Giga Chad. Now we have Big Ed. Literally, even with no neck, the, the guy's a stud. All he needs to do is like stop wine coping and lose some weight, and he'd probably look really good. He looks like a little kid. Like, look, look how he sat. He doesn't want to date. He needs a hug. Now, when Ed goes home, he needs a shave because his ex Rose didn't particularly like his body hair. He doesn't want to make the same mistake twice, and he removes his body hair in possibly the most Ed way fashioned. I can imagine. Come here, little kid. Where's your ball? Afterwards, Ed takes Liz on a date to do goat yoga, which is yoga. You get you, you you get it. And I just want to say as well, look at the struggle this man is going through. I think Sisyphus had less of a task pushing a boulder up a mountain for all eternity than this man doing downward dog. <laughs> Oh, he just, it's so genius. He looks so bad, man. The next day, Ed invites Liz over for a third date, and this time to meet the mother. So do you have any interesting stories about Ed growing up? He used to spin on his head, <laughs> like a little top. <laughs> yeah, they would get everybody in the room. Ed, come and spin on your head. I would spin on, they call me, my dad called me Blockhead. I love imagining Ed as like some kind of like Beyblade just spinning as a kid. You guys remember Beyblades? It was, it was like this thing, you'd, you'd get a, a spinny thing and you'd, you'd pull a string and then it'd like spin. Like right there. Cool. <laughs> Thank <Awesome>. you. <laughs> you can't do that. Part of my soul died watching that clip. I genuinely don't think I've had more secondhand embarrassment in my entire life. You could see her recoil at like 
a million miles an hour. It's like the Dementors in Harry Potter, but like, instead of sucking away all your happy thoughts, they just implant that thought of Ed kissing Liz. All right, let me show you how it's done. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Keep the head down. Don't look up. Fuck. Shit. Come on, man. I think I gotta just slow down. I need to slow down with Liz. I'm just kidding. Shit. I love, like, anything Ed does, no matter how menial. It, it just looks like a Herculean task for him. Like, swinging that golf club. He looks like Michael Keaton playing Batman. You, you get the golf club. You get, I've got a golf club. I've never seen a man more uncomfortable with a golf club. Golf club, dusty. Dusty. Have you kissed her? I tried to kiss her. She goes to leave, and at the door, I go in for the kiss, and she drops her head, and I kiss her right on the nose. This sounds like a train wreck, man. You should be dating someone who adores you. For you. When it's right, it's the easiest thing there is. I don't think I've heard more contradictory and simultaneously useless information in my entire life. Women should be easy, they cook and they clean. That's all there is. But then something terrible happens. Something that would change the course of Ed's life forever. Last night, she was at her restaurant. I was there at the same time and she was having a drink with um, a guy. I was shocked because I'd been there all night and she had never came over to say hi. It threw me off. You know what? Can we just get a compilation of people slamming their hands into tables, please? Like that, that is really needed right now. She talked to the opposite sex. She's the forbidden. That's it. Yeah. What the fuck? None of you get the green screen anymore. Go home. Oh shit. No, no, no. I broke it. I broke it. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. I don't expect it to be forgiven. I will bring the green screen back. Anyways, he apologizes for being so forward with the kiss. I mean, it was literally like, like the kiss was. And then to make up for it, they book a hotel room together. How wholesome. Um, thank you for this. I'm not gonna do nose kiss today. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know she sees me as boyfriend material. There's this bit where he's doing like a debrief to the producers of the show and like you could just see everything in the background is merch from his store. Like having that much merch, it, that is the YouTuber dream. I do not think there is a single YouTuber with a more varied merch selection. Like I know Dream has got this little like commemorative pins, but he's, he's, Ed has pillows of his own face, man. You can't beat that. I mean, you know, I can't hate on him. I respect him. Look, look at this merch. Wow, look, look at this. Wow, look at this merch. Wow, so cool. And literally, as soon as Ed solves a problem, he then creates another one, bringing him all the way back down to rock bottom again. This guy has more fallacies and sabotages himself more than Thanos. And she agreed to go to a wedding with me. But then last night, basically I fucked up. I have this insecurity with her that she might go back to her ex because I think she has in the past. And they only broke it off about two months ago. So I basically accused her of still being in contact with him, which was not the r right thing to do. He just gets let out of the doghouse and then does like any percent world record speed run to get put back in it again. I'm good boyfriend material, right? I, I, I really am. I, I, what, why'd you still speak to him then? Why'd you still speak to him then? I can tell that she, um, you know, is upset. When somebody's mad at me, I run. I, I either, I either, Crack a joke or I run. I run away. I, I want you to picture this in your head, right? Imagine Ed running in any kind of physical capacity. Like a quick time event, like mash X to get Ed out of the awkward situation. Anyway, they finally managed to clear the air for like, Jesus, the, the, the third time now. And you know, she says that she'll stay in the hotel with him. And then she goes to leave. All right. All right, so 11 o'clock, yes. I won't kiss you on the nose. Oh my gosh, I'm realizing how short you are gonna be with Hills. <laughs> You're gonna be this. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Did he have a tattoo of himself on his leg? Yeah, if, if you're gonna get a tattoo of yourself, you know, if you got like big head in like italics or stylized, I'd get it, okay? But just like, this is like me getting my subscriber count tattooed on my leg or something. There's a lot that can go wrong, but I think there's a lot that can go right. Hey, how are you? Okay. Do you want me on the side? Yeah, yeah, I'll get the door. Me lady. <laughs> You should you should not be saying that word. That 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 is the last thing that should be in your vocabulary. Just 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 add like a little fedora on him. There you go. Look look, look at that guys. Look, parasiticals finally doing MLG again. I wonder if it snows at this elevation. What is that? Oh, that's like an electric plant. Look at all these smashed cars. Oh my gosh. It's a it's a good thing I'm beautiful. <laughs> Lord, we may not know of Big Ed's crimes. But let us one day have forgiveness in our hearts for him. It's so awkward, man. Like the mix of her rapidly pressing her fingers together. The fact that his laugh just looks like he ruptured his spleen as well. I like how Ed has said to himself so many times that he's silver tongued, you know, he's quick witted. There's a difference between being charismatic and just filling up the dead air with noise. Uh, also, to make things awkward, the hotel that they're staying at calls Ed and basically says that they've got a room available but it's only a bed together when Liz wanted two separate beds because she doesn't quite feel comfortable yet sleeping with Ed. Oh, well, we are short on double queens and now we would like to change into a king. That is our fault. We just want to make sure that that's okay with you guys. It would be a lakeside balcony king that we have available. Okay, I'll take it. Perfect. All okay. Right. He's such a sea mollusk. Like, notice how the woman says, are you both okay with that? It's just like, Yes. This is what I love about Ed though, and why he will be famous for many years to come. The producers will stage stuff like this, you know, just to like force and create tension. But with Ed, you can't tell whether the producers are telling him to say stuff, or this is his own input. Like he's, he's such a character, it's impossible to tell. Inside the hotel, Ed tries to get to first base with Liz. Again. Congratulations. You did it. We're proud of you, man. Congratulations. Gratulia. Big Ed did it, guys. He finally kissed a woman outside of Discord. Please, just, just give it up for this man. If he has a chance, then we all do as well. Hey, pumpkin. Peach. Peaches. 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 You tasted like a peach last night. Cheers. All right, Ed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Let me... This is PG-13. I would like to get through this video without having to take on two sponsors. Last night was off the charts. Um, we, um, we started snuggling and we started to kiss. You, look, we, we know where this is going. All right, they, 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 they did the thing. And, and, and that makes this clip hurt so much more. But if Liz and I are gonna work out, she needs to get along with my daughter. So I hope Liz agrees to meet her, or it's possible it's not gonna work. <laughs> so now, Ed has one final mission, to introduce Liz to his daughter, who are apparently the same age. You know, I, I still gotta respect, man. Like, he he's still repping his own merch in public. Like, you know what? TLC aren't puppeting Ed, he's puppeting them. I'm afraid for my dad to get his heart broken, but Liz looks older than me. She looks rugged. Botox does wonders. What? Only the daughter of this man would roast the girl for looking older than what she is. Not all complaining that they're the same age. What is with this family? It, it, it's like a family of narcissists. The Bakers from Resident Evil 7 were, were more welcoming than these people. Welcome to the family, son. I'm not gonna hurt you. Sometimes I feel like I'm way more mature than he is in some aspects. Doesn't make it more, co more comfortable, no, but I'm sorry. I love how they pull up that shot of him just wine coping. Like, that that needs to be its own meme, surely. <laughs> Me, when too mad, took an autism test online and believed it to be an accurate diagnosis. My name is Deez. But then, yet again, after the camera stopped rolling and everyone went home, Ed and Liz, they had another argument. This is like, this is like the fifth one now, man. I'm bored of this. I just want to, you know, apologize. 
what happened at the club wasn't fair to you. And I don't know how you feel. I think we're not very good communicators. Like, you don't apologize, then add how we're bad communicators. The entire point of an apology is to take responsibility for your mistakes. You don't just then refute it straight after. What's that meme with the funny cartoon man with the mustache? You Think it. Even though I know we have to continue to build our communication skills. And Liz didn't really land on my forever idea. What do you mean forever? You, you've been dating four weeks. you got to slow things down, man. Come on, it, it's Gen Z now. Uni students are staying home until they're 30 now because they can't pay off their debt. We've got more video games now than just Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. We're even having kids later now, something which you obviously aren't interested in at all. Seeing Liz get emotional tonight and crying, I see that as a positive. It meant to me that this person really wants a possible future. And I'm I'm feeling pretty good about that. I mean, she said herself that she doesn't want to look into doing it long term. She then cries and you see that as a win. Oh my God, I, j I just think of the Hulk in the Avengers. I see that as a win. I see that as a an absolute win. I would love for this man to do a TED Talk seminar of the mental gymnastics of how to please a woman. Also, he does this thing near the end where he like imitates a kiss to her and she just totally blanks him and keeps walking. It's so awkward. <sighs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this amazing tale of Big Ed. I I'm just going to do one video on it. That's why I compiled the entire series into one video because I don't want to like keep having to do big head videos. I've got some bigger projects in the works. I'm looking at making a second channel soon for like live streaming and stuff. I am going to be streaming more as well. So go to the link in the description for that. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going it's to be fun. Funny.